Hello, my name is AJ Adelaide, and my job title is electronics engineer um, at Tinker Air Force Base. It is an aerospace engineering job. My job is I'm a technical expert for the internal manufacturing group. Um, our group makes these interfaces that tests uh, electronics in the plane, uh, certain functional capabilities, like they might have a box that controls uh, the avionics panel on the front, a box that um, has to do with radar, another box that has to do with you know the flight controls and so we make interfaces to be able to test those. And my primary responsibility is being the technical expert for the group that manufacture those internally. Uh, we have a group in our department that has a rapid prototyping lab where we have things like laser etchers and 3D printers. And we're able to do a lot of our work internally to manufacture those interfaces for testing those functional cars in planes. Well, growing up, I always liked computers. Um, I dabbled in a little bit of coding as a kid. I liked playing a lot of a lot of video games on my mom's IBM, and I got really into like Prince of Persia and Dig Dug and all that. And I thought it'd be really cool to be able to design those. So when I went to school, they didn't really have um, they didn't have a graphic design or anything like that. And I was leaning towards that. And so I thought, all right, let me try coding. And eventually I went in for uh, for coding, but that didn't really pan out. I didn't really like the software side of it. And I was a lot more into the hardware side of it. And so I was able to switch my majors in school. And that got me into more of the hardware side of electrical engineering. So for me, I'm I'm in the aerospace sector and they employ all kinds of engineers, pretty much just like every field. You can find electrical engineers in every field you can find chemical engineers and you know fields that have to do with that. But electrical, it's very uh, it's very wide and you can cover a lot of ground there. And uh, so I got a undergrad in electrical engineering and got the job um, out of there in the aerospace sector. Um, then I went for my master's in engineering management. Uh, so that's what I had, but all it took was the undergrad in electrical engineering to be able to get the job that I had. And the job actually paid for my master's. Uh, our biggest challenges are we each functional card in the plane um, is very unique so each comes with a different set of problems one might be to control power throughout the plane and so that has to have all these considerations of how hot things get so you have to you have to think about cooling you have to make sure all the wires in there are resistant to any sort of wear um, so there's special considerations and just testing the components on that card you have to take. And that changes from each box to each box. So once I worked with one that had a fire warning and a leak detection. So that was important more in the mechanical aspect because we didn't want any anything to damage that because that's one of the most important parts of the plane is letting the pilot know if there's something wrong. Um, so it's just all of the design considerations from function to function within the plane. Um, it gives you a lot of time to think, a lot of time to come up with new angles and things, and you get to keep learning what's going on in modern day technology because you kind of have to use those things to update a lot of older systems um, and older planes. So. Uh, for me, I really like uh, detail and 
organization to, to some level, but like I like paying attention to detail. It's just whether it's like in music or TV or movies, I just like noticing the little things. And electrical engineering is just a bunch of little things coming together to this big thing. And the more it comes together, the less you notice the little things. Um, and the more you notice the main function of the system. And it's cool to break that down. I've always liked that. I've always liked the idea of seeing something as a whole that works and then breaking it down piece by piece and going, how does this little thing work? And then understanding it as a whole. And I've always done that with kind of all genres of everything. And uh, it's really fulfilling to be able to do that like as a job, you know, for a living. Because it, it you know, fills that, that hole of kind of wanting to do uh, attention to detail oriented things. If you have any interest in just how things work, um, I would take a, phys a physics class, a physics class with some kind of lab with it, because I feel like that bridges a lot of the boring stuff with the, you see the result stuff. So you might think that it's all math and all this, but then you take physics and you actually see it in action and you realize, oh, this explains everything, like how everything works. And you could branch off from there into so many fields of engineering that uh, teach you those things. Um, but yeah, I would say get into a physics class, get into a lab and get some experience with hands-on things and l learning how things work in motion and see what that sparks your interest in. Yeah, like if, if you get on YouTube and just look up like cool tricks of anything, just like feats that impress you, whether it's like some trick shot, you know, someone throws a basketball from a bridge and like makes it, um, or whether it's uh, gymnastics and someone doing a bunch of flips. Um, to take a look at that. There's like uh, analysis on YouTube. You can go on, if you ever watch something and go, whoa, like how does that work? Get on YouTube and look up an analysis of it. There's always someone explaining how it works. And sometimes it's boring and you're like, okay, I don't really care about that. But sometimes it's, you're like, wow. And you want to get to know more. And so, yeah, you can always just look up how things work if it ever interests you. In my field, yeah, I mean, you can you can pretty much go anywhere. Like, um, I I really enjoy playing guitar, and in electrical engineering, it's kind of it's cool to know that your hobbies always have some sort of uh, electrical engineering behind it. So if if I wanted to, I could go and try to work somewhere, like learn how to make guitar pedals, or even learn the electronics behind guitars. Like that's a thing that I could do because of this background. Um, and yeah, all the fields have some sort of engineering. So you might not even think of it, you know, um, but just look into it and you'll see that there's somebody behind it that, uh, you know, has taken the classes I've taken and has looked up the stuff that I've looked up and has had the experience talking about it. Um, I'd say like your remote control, you know, for controlling your fire stick or any kind of, um, any kind of just regular TV cable control. It's just under there, there's a circuit board. And then in that circuit board, there's a bunch of switches and each button you press makes a connection and it opens up that switch and it lets current through. And that sends it somewhere that says, Hey, do this, you know, Hey, turn on the TV. Hey, um, switch from input one to input two um, just small things like that almost almost any thing in your house that is in some kind of case kind of electronic if you unscrew it and you open it up you'll see a circuit board in there which is what i work on every day and uh, that like powers everything
Uh, my job uses them to make interfaces with uh, plane components. And we use those electrical circuits to test out on those uh, components if anything is wrong. So that way, um, when something kind of goes wrong with a, a whole functional box, we don't have to throw out the whole thing. We can just replace that one piece. And so in order to do that, we work with, we design electrical circuits to interface with those functional cards. And then we test them on a, on a test stand and we run our programs that kind of, it runs it through simulations of like what could go wrong. And if, if A goes wrong, then, you know, what are the possibilities of why? And it lists it out. And um, yeah, m most of our job is designing electrical circuits to uh, test out those, those plane functions. Um, my job uses complex numbers in the sense of we have a lot of work with radar and electrical ma magnetic fields. And when you get to that, you're talking about uh, rotations and it's not just like, it's not just a number. It's a number and an angle. And it's not just uh, like a one or two dimensional. It then becomes more than that. So you have to account for not just how how hard you throw a ball, but what direction you throw the ball in. And that's accounted for with those numbers. And we use it to, we use the equations that come from a lot of uh, electromagnetic field theory to make sure that those functional cars within the plane are not, their signals aren't getting disrupted. And so we come up with shields um, that like kind of sandwich our, our signals so that let's say, someone shoots some kind of IR laser in the air, it won't disrupt those cards in the plane because they're shielded. And a lot of those uh, techniques used to shield those signals uses complex numbers. Now you know more about electrical circuits. Let's use the voltage formula to calculate the current. Let's say you wanna calculate the current in a circuit with voltage two I and impedance one plus I. How would we do that? We first need to look at our voltage equals current times impedance formula and solve for current. We do this by dividing both sides by the impedance. Now we see that current equals voltage divided by impedance. Let's replace the voltage with the 2i that was given in our scenario. Similarly, let's replace the impedance with 1 plus i. But how do we divide complex numbers? We know that all numbers are complex numbers. Therefore, all numbers can be written in a standard form a plus bi. This tells us that we need to do something to get i out of the denominator. Also, remember that i equals the square root of negative one. And we know that we can't leave a radical in the denominator. So what can we do? We know that the opposite of a square root is a power of two. With that in mind, let's see what we can do. Focusing on the denominator, having two terms, let's say x and y. We would love to be able to square each of them. So what could we multiply the quantity of x plus y by to have the result of x squared minus y squared? That's right. We would multiply by x minus y. When we apply this idea to complex numbers, we call them complex conjugates. The complex conjugate of A plus BI is A 
minus the i. For example, the complex conjugate of nine minus four i is nine plus four i. Notice that the only difference between a complex number and its conjugate is the operation in front of the b. Let's apply this knowledge to our problem. Remember, to simplify and keep a fraction equivalent, we multiply both the top and bottom of the fraction by the same value. So, we'll multiply top and bottom of our fraction by the complex conjugate of the denominator. We multiply 2i over the quantity of 1 plus i by the quantity of 1 minus i all over the quantity of 1 minus i. If we distribute the 2i across the top, we have 2i times 1, which is 2i and 2i times negative i, which is negative 2i squared. In the denominator, we can FOIL, which is just a fun way to remember how to distribute. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative i is negative i. Positive i times 1 is positive i. Positive i times negative i is negative i squared. Let's simplify the numerator by replacing i squared with negative 1. In the denominator, we can combine like terms. Negative i plus i is 0 i. And we can also replace i squared with negative 1. We now have 2i plus 2 in the numerator and 1 plus 1 in the denominator. Let's move the positive 2i and positive 2 in the numerator to read 2 plus 2i so that it starts to match the standard form of a complex number. And 1 plus 1 simplifies to 2. There's no longer a radical or imaginary value in the denominator, all because we multiplied the top and bottom of our fraction by the complex conjugate of the original denominator. Notice, this still isn't quite that a plus bi format. The quantity of 2 plus 2i all over 2 means that both 2 and 2i are divided by 2. So let's rewrite this as 2 divided by 2 plus 2i over 2. Once we simplify each fraction, we get 1 plus i. The complex number 1 plus i represents the current of our circuit. What if we had a situation where we couldn't simplify the fractions? How would that change those final steps? Let's look at 7 minus 10i all over 4. We would rewrite it as 7 over 4 minus 10i over 4, just like we did with the previous example. 7 fourths is not reduced, meaning we would leave it as is. 10i over 4 can be simplified by dividing top and bottom by 2, resulting in 5i over 2. We would write our final answer as 7 fourths minus 5 halves i. Notice that i was just moved from the numerator to beside the fraction. We see that a is 7 fourths and b is negative 5 over 2. We can write any number in the standard form of a complex number.